We want to say thanks to our good friends at Hometown Ticketing for their support. Hometown's the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. If you go to their website, you're going to see why. Hometown Ticketing is digital ticketing that offers more. Go to hometownticketing.com and check them out today. We also want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to gipper.com. Start creating world-class content for your school's social media channel. It's going to help you celebrate your teams and promote your athletes. Gipper's used and trusted by over 4,000 athletic programs across the country. It's professional graphic design made easy. Go to gipper.com to get started. We also want to say thanks to Home Campus. Home Campus is a platform you're going to use every single day. Things like scheduling, student athlete eligibility and clearance. Who doesn't do that every day? Uh, uploading digital forms and signatures, communicating with everybody in your program. You name it, Home Campus does it, and it does it better and faster. Go to homecampus.com. Mention the podcast. It'll give you a nice discount. That's homecampus.com. We also want to say thank you to Vital Signs Wall of Fame. Go to their website, vitalsignswalloffame.com, and check out their interactive touchscreen. That's right, touchscreen video consoles. They are great ways to show off your school record boards for all the teams, for all the sports, or your school's Hall of Fame, or simply share your school's most compelling stories and your proud history. The website is vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check them out today. We also want to say thanks to Snap Raise. Have you ever spent weeks and weeks with a fundraiser and got little, if any, return? Stop right here. Go to snapraise.com. Hands down, the best online fundraiser out there. We used it at our school with tremendous success. Our coaches loved it. Our parents loved it. It works. Go to snapraise.com. Check out their other great platforms. But if you're looking for a fundraiser, you found it. Go to snapraise.com. We also want to say thank you to Huddle. Go to huddle.com. Change the way you see the game. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years. But when I became an athletic director, I wanted a platform that was going to perform for all of our sports. And Huddle came through like a champ. Our coaches loved it. Our kids loved it. Even our parents loved all the tools that Huddle provided that let them experience sports at the highest level. Go to huddle.com. Join the 8 million users. Turn your school into a huddle school. We also want to say thanks to Ohio University's online Master of Science in Athletic Administration. This affordable 20-week online master's program focuses exclusively on athletic administration. And when you finish, you're going to have your master's degree, but you're also going to have 11 NIAAA leadership training courses to go towards your RAA or your CAA. You're also going to be part of a huge network with connections in athletics across the country. To get started, go to ohio.edu slash info slash M-A-A. Check them out today. We want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive, indoor score tables and video boards. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and schedule a live web demo to see their scoreboards and their score tables in action. Their products not only generate income for your department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. That's sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Uh, athletic Surveys is about connections, and they're going to connect you with probably a group you already hear from, uh, the complainers, the gripers, but that's only a small um, segment of your network. Athletic Surveys is also going to connect you to the 98% that supports your program, and that's a tremendously valuable tool to have when you're talking with a frustrated parent or maybe uh, your principal or even your school board. Go to athleticsurveys.com. They're going to create a custom survey that lets you take the pulse of everybody in your program. That's athleticsurveys.com. Welcome back, everybody, to the Educational AD Podcast and our newest segment, Small School AD. We sit down with small school athletic directors from across the country, and we let them share their best practices for working in that unique environment that is a small school athletic department. 
Today, we've got uh, somebody I like to call a friend of the show, uh, Zach Shank. Uh, Zach uh, has been a guest on our podcast before. He hosts his own very popular podcast. Zach's a registered athletic administrator. He's actually going to be uh, taking his CAA exam coming up at our Florida State Conference soon. He's the director of athletics at Eagles View Academy, and that's here in Florida and Jacksonville. So, Zach Shank, welcome to Small School AD. Jake, I appreciate you having me on, man. Excited to kind of talk and bring some attention to the smaller schools here. Well, uh, you and I have talked about this before. I actually got my start at uh, a couple of very small schools, about 100 students in the high school. So I know very well the uh, the challenges and the opportunities that are there for small school athletic directors. But before we get going, share with our listeners a little bit about your path and your journey that has now brought you to Eagles View. Yeah, so uh, I am on my 10th year of being an athletic administrator. Um, so I've been in, started in this business when I was 24. Uh, which is kind of, as you mentioned, my own podcast, which give a shameless plug here, The Winning Way, but we're not talking about that right now. But that's what brought me to start that um, was because when I started out at 24 years old, I did not know what I was doing. I was at a small school. Uh, I have been at small schools pretty much the entire time. Um, and I enjoy the the small school setting. I grew up that way. I uh, went to a small college as well. Um, and so I've kind of been a, an advocate for the smaller schools. Um, and so started out in 2014 as an athletic director, um, then uh, moved in Raleigh, North Carolina, where I was a, at News Christian Academy for five years and then moved back to Jacksonville. I started in Jacksonville, moved and then started, came back to Jacksonville now here at Eagles View Academy. We've got about, well, we're K through 12. We've got about 350 students um, and about 125 to 150 of that is ninth through 12th grade. Um, but I also manage all of our middle school teams and our JV teams and our varsity teams as well. So it's not just the high school teams. People think, oh, high school, 100, you know, 25, 150 students, that's easy. Well, I'm also managing middle school sports, obviously JV sports, sub varsity sports, and then also the varsity level as well. So uh, one of the cool things that I like to talk about is we were one of the smallest uh, schools in the state of Florida with 11 man football. Um, so yes, we, we make it happen. Um, you know, yeah, we pull up and, we may not have the numbers that some of our other schools and opponents have, but we get out there and we compete. Um, and so we do have 11 man football here at EVA um, and uh, kind of our claim to fame is one of being one of the small schools with 11 man football. So uh, like I said, been an athletic administrator for 10 years now, uh, really diving into NIAAA and FIAAA and really getting the certifications and, and things like that and trying to get plugged in within the state and within some other athletic directors. And so uh, really enjoying the small school side of it and being an advocate for them um, and, and helping them grow. And uh, that's that's where I'm at. So, Well, uh, you already alluded to, uh, you know, one of the, um, you know, challenges i guess for lack of a better word of, of being that small school ad and i know you've done a lot of coaching in your career but um what are um the tips or maybe the best practices that you would like to share from your experience with our listeners on small school ad yeah i mean one of the ones that like obviously it's a no-brainer right and it's it's in every every facet of our life communication is such a key part right uh, our marriage is not going well if we're not communicating. Uh, parenting is not going well if we're not properly communicating. Relationships, uh, working relationships, friendships, every aspect of our life revolves around communication, right? And a lot of people think it's really easy within a small school just to blast something out there or to send it over or whatever. Or everybody works within the school, and that's not the case. Uh, we have in-building coaches and we have out-of-building coaches. And uh, in-building is people who are employed full-time here at EVA and are out-of-building are people who have a regular 9 to 5 who show up at 3.30, 4 o'clock for practices and games. And I'm going to figure out a way to communicate with all of them. And so a couple things that we do here is uh, we use obviously different uh, avenues of, of communication. Um, and, and the biggest thing for us that's been really helpful is, is we meet and we try to meet as often as possible. Now I'm not meeting once a week. Sometimes we're not even meeting once a month. We definitely meet once a quarter with those sports that are in, in season. Um, and then we have two major meetings at the end of the school year. That's every single coach that's in our program. And then we have a meeting at the very beginning of the year for every coach that's in our program. And then we have seasonal meetings. So for instance, um, we are in the spring season, probably over the hill in the spring season, coming up on, on tournament time uh, here sh uh, sh before long. Um, so we will go into the end of the year meeting 
which is fall, winter, and spring coaches. We'll have that. Then we'll break for summer. We have summer workouts. We have all of those things that we have going on. Then we're going to come back probably second to last week in July when we're going to meet again. Hopefully by then I have all my new coaches hired that need to be hired. If somebody has resigned or transitioned or moved or whatever it is, hopefully I have all my coaches hired because that meeting right there is my first initial kickoff meeting for the next school year. Um, and in that meeting, communication is, is a major thing. Now, Jake, you've done it, right? We sit there, we're in these meetings. You feel like you've talked for four hours straight. You know, there's not a lot of interaction. It's a lot of going over manuals, potentially going over protocols, going over this stuff that is just, you know, can be long and drawn out. And so you try to figure out how the communication. So what I have done in those meetings is I'm giving people jobs, right? Like, hey, if I've got a seasoned veteran coach that's been in our program for a long time, hey, I'm going to get you to talk about home campus. Uh, here in Florida, we we use a company called Home Campus where all of our physicals and liabilities and things like that go into. So I might give it to our football coach who's been here for 15 years. I'm going to give it to him, let him talk about something. I'm going to give uh, communicating with parents maybe over to my assistant athletic director and me. We may tag team it together, may give something over to the volleyball coach to, to talk. So there's a little bit of a break between just me standing in front of everybody um, and, and just constantly reading or talking or going over a PowerPoint the entire time. So really try to break that up. Uh, you obviously take breaks. It's typically, you know, those meetings are roughly, you know, an hour and a half to two hours, which I know people are like, I can't believe you meet that long, but there's a lot of information there um, that we have to go over. We have new coaches, we have new protocols. We've got things that have changed. We got new programs that we're adopting for this, this year that we've got to go over. So a lot of it is training. A lot of it is, is going through all of that stuff. So the two major meetings, the end, the beginning of the year and then the end of the year. And then in between those, we have seasonal meetings. Um, so right before the fall season, we will meet with all of the fall coaches. That's middle school, JV, and varsity of any of the sports that are going on in the fall. We move to the winter. We do the same thing, seasonal meeting in the winter. And then we do a, a seasonal meeting leading into the spring. Now, obviously, the sooner you get those done, the better because, you know, you wait too long and then the practices are starting. Their availability is, is less. So you got to try to do that uh, and, and get it out there in, in enough uh, notice. And then the other thing is I will meet with our coaches and our coaching staff uh, quarterly, right? Sometimes it's monthly if I've got a group that really wants to meet. And um, for instance, our volleyball coaches, uh, none of them work on campus, right? Like that could be a fiasco. That could be a disaster when it comes to certain things, right? Um, but none of them work. And so they've requested a monthly meeting. I have no problem with that one bit. So we'll all get together, sit around a table. Typically, if we're meeting, we're eating. That's my motto. Um, so I will always feed my coaches, uh, give them an opportunity to um, kind of break down and, and relax for a second, and then we'll dive into whatever we need. But uh, communication on the on the front face to face side, and then communication on the back end. Right? We have emails. Uh, how often do we miss an email? Every single day, right? Like, hey, sorry, I missed your email. It just happened with me here, Jake, with you with the link to the the Zoom call. Right? Hey, I need you to resend that. I missed it. Uh, a text message. How often do we miss a text message? And I explain to people like I get texts a hundred times a day. I'm getting a hundred emails a day. Like if I miss something, I apologize. It's my job to get to them. But sometimes, you know, we're human. We make mistakes. So what we have is is we have um, a platform that we use. I'm sure everybody has used it. It's it's you know they're all necessary evils, if you will. Right now, we are using GroupMe. Um, which is not great. I get that. And, and we're making uh, the looks at, at, at potentially moving to some other, you know, I know they've got um, different platforms out there that you can communicate through sports. You, you've got um, what's the other band. You got all of these other ones that, you know, we recently learned about in last December at the NIAAA conference down in Orlando. Um, but we use group me and what we do is we put together uh, I'll put together a, a chat and it's the easiest and quickest way to get communication out there. And Jake, you know, Everybody's got a different style phone, right? Some things don't communicate well together, but within that app, what I can do is, hey, 2024 fall coaches, that's every fall coach. If there's a major announcement, whether, um, you know, hey, the athletic trainer's running running late today, she's not going to be here so uh, until four o'clock. So from three o'clock to four o'clock, just to have your athletes do something else rather than, you know, seeing the trainer. Um, hey, game got moved. We've got to adjust the time. Officials are having a hard time with it, whatever it may be. I blast it out via that. And so, again, a lot of people say, hey, that's not great, whatever. 
but again, texting, it's some form of texting is the quickest and easiest way of communication. Because again, you know, we're not glued to our emails, I'm not glued to my computer. I'm often out of my office more than I'm in my office. Um, and I'm sure Jake is, you can relate to that, right? You know, there's fires to be put out everywhere and, and um, not glued to my computer for my emails. So communication now that's on the small school side, right? And, and we have the privilege to be able to do that because I only have 35 to 40 coaches within my program and that's heads and assistants, but I'm not an A day public school. That's got, you know, 200 coaches. Um, so again, this is what works for me, as Jake said, within the small school side, right? Like this is what we're talking about is what we're hitting on the smaller school side of things. We have the ability to break out that phone, send a text. Now, parent communication, uh, this is where it gets, you know, real kind of crazy here. Now we have a, a athletic department app and we do a lot of communication through that app and, um, it's special, you know, specialized for our department with our logos and everything like that. And it's through mascot media. If anybody's ever heard of those. Um, I heard of their company. And so we use their, their platform and we can send updates through there. Hey, today's raining, right? We live here in Florida. As I was telling Jake, before we started recording, the spring season has been kind of a disaster with, with all the rain that we've gotten and fields flooding and hey, it only rained for 20 minutes, but yet it was such a hard downpour. There's standing water on the field. And so being able to send those game notifications out through the app has been a huge, huge game changer for us this year. Um, where, hey, I can hit reschedule, TBA, reason why, weather, field conditions, whatever I hit, and then I hit apply. And once I hit apply, it says, do you want to send notification? I hit OK, boom. And within seconds, it's coming through. And so what we do in our meetings with our parents and, and team meetings and seasonal meetings, uh, we go over that and say, hey, make sure you turn on your notifications for this app because you're going to get notifications through here um, and so on. So those are our major ways of communication. Um, Jake, I've been going nonstop here. You want to, you want to throw anything at me, feel free. Um, but those are our ways of communication. We also use group me with our coaches and the teams and the players, because again, it's the easiest and quickest way. And then we also have newsletters. Uh, we have social media outlets that we use for communication as well. And I let people know that, Hey, please check on every avenue of, of means of communication because Facebook, right? Instagram, Twitter, whatever it may be, whatever platform you have and use, go follow our athletic site. We have one athletic page for each of those program or each of those platforms and go pay attention to what's posted on there as well, because there's updates and things that we will do out there. Now, I don't use that like, Hey, you know, parents please hear you know like it's not basic communication like that but it's important information that needs to get out faster we can use social media for as well no i love how you you touched on really three key areas of of this communication umbrella you talked about the personal meetings the in-face meetings with your coaching staff you know throughout the season kicking off the school year just so critical and i love you know i did the same thing um have that veteran coach you know, present on a topic to kind of break it up. And it also helps with, you know, buy-in, you know, they see that, you know, that veteran, that legacy coach presenting and they go, Oh, wow, this must really be important. Uh, and then all the different platforms that you mentioned, you know, again, you, you as an AD, sometimes you're bound by your, your state association, you have to do this or your school district, if you have multiple schools, but find one that works for you. And then the final point that you made, you got to communicate, the communication, you know, you could have the greatest website in the world and all these different apps that you're posting information on. But if you as an AD haven't communicated that to your parents or the student athletes, it's it's not going to be helping you out. So, right. Zach, great, great stuff. Um, if one of our listeners want to reach out, pick your brain a little bit more or even find out more about uh, your great podcast, um, what's the best way that they can get a hold of you? Yeah, uh, honestly, you can shoot me an email. You can, and, and, and again, best way we just talked about it, not glued to my computer is give me a call or text me. Uh, my number is 904 210 9518. Uh, I love talking shop, if you will. Um, I, I enjoy getting out there and connecting. And, and that's, you know, a, a big thing for me is networking. Another thing is, is you can follow me on Twitter, and that's at coach underscore ZTS. Uh, it seems to be a lot of where our coaches are. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm just always in the market to connect and, uh, love to learn more. And, and I, I enjoy learning from other people. Um, and if I can help you out, I would love to as well. So, uh, biggest ways text or, uh, call and, uh, Twitter is where it's at. All right. Well, Zach, thanks so much for, uh, presenting. Um, 
Uh, and uh, for listeners, you know, uh, reach out, add Zach to your network. You've got a great resource here. Zach, all the best, um, you know, with the coming uh, spring sport games, uh, as well yep. as your own uh, CAA exam. Uh, you know, good luck with that. Uh, if you're listening to this, um, Zach and I are both going to be at the uh, FIAAA conference in Orlando. Please uh, look us up, say hi, shoot us a text, or, uh, you know, grab us in uh, whatever uh, room we might be in. Um, so, Zach, thanks again for coming on. Absolutely, Jake. I appreciate it, man. Always a pleasure. Hey, for our listeners, we appreciate you tuning in. And we do this just about every week. And we upload the Zoom recordings to the Educational Lady Podcast YouTube channel. Thanks, as always, for listening. Come back next time for another small school AD tip on the Educational Lady Podcast. Hey, that was Zach Shank from Eagles View Academy in Jacksonville, Florida. You know, make sure you uh, check him out. Check out his podcast, too, the Winning Way podcast. Uh, he does a great job. Before we go, uh, obviously, we want to thank our sponsors that help make this happen. We want to say thanks to Huddle, uh, Hometown Ticketing, uh, Snap, Raise, Fundraising Platform, Vital Signs, Wall of Fame, Video Boards, Ohio University's Online Master in Sport Athletic Administration. I want to say thanks to Gipper, uh, Social Media, I uh, want to thank Home Campus, uh, homecampus.com, Sideline Interactive, indoor score tables and video boards, athletic surveys by Lifetrack. Uh, if you've never done a survey, you need to check them out. Thanks, as always, for uh, listening. If you're a small school AD and you'd like to be on, shoot me an email. We are still uh, we still have open slots to record for this summer and this fall. Uh, and uh, thanks, as always, for listening to the Educational AD Podcast. We'll see you next time.